Okay, good morning, good day. 10th of Kislev, another, I told you yesterday, the, the, the month is replete with Hasidish Yom Tovim. Yud Kislev, uh, but I guess, before, well, I was, I always, I want to start with the Blurchas and Rafu Shlemas, but at the same time, I want to give opportunity for other people to come on. So we'll we'll do that when we start the uh, the timing. Okay, 10th Kislev. On this day in 5587, 1826, the Mitle Rebbe was released from his imprisonment in the city of Vitebsk. So this is a yom of, of liberation, like uh, the one we're coming up to, Yutes Kislev, of the liberation of the Alter Rebbe. So any liberation, particularly with a tzaddik, and particularly it's with the tzaddik ador, has a universal effect. It contributes to the ultimate release from the bondage of Gullus and the revelation of Gula, which is one of the reasons it's so important, besides being our family. During the preceding Holomoid Sukkis, so here's the uh, Seder of events, <clears throat> it became known that the Middle Rebbe had been slandered on Sunday of Parshish Noyach, when he ate Tishrei, he left Lubavitch accompanied by officers. At noon, you know, he's going, he's on the way, right, to his imprisonment. At noon, so what did he do? He arrived in Dobromisl, where he said to Maimer, Maim Rabin, right? He's on his way, doesn't stop him from saying Chesidus. On Monday, he left there and traveled to the Ozna, where he said another man, flames are flames of fire. And on Tuesday, he left there <coughs> for Viteps, where he remained imprisoned until the Sunday of Pasha's Vayishlach, 10 Kislev. Interesting, right? even on his way to prison, under guard. And he says, Chesidus. Okay. <clears throat> Today's Tanya. Okay, so let's begin with first a bracha. And in spite of what's going on, at least in the American news, achayolim, and the whole effort that we have engaged until now to get rid of, utterly destroy the negativity and reveal the light should be brought to fruition speedily in our days. Lessons in, oh, you are refuge flamers. Any and everybody. First, the main to your bracha. Devor Rachel Bat Miriam Chava, Shev refuge flamer. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Arab Yitzhak Fivish Ben Brani Malka. Tohaben Rafu Ishlein, Bekore, Mamish. Amen. Riva Malka, Bas Gila Zelda. We have Rafu Ishlein, Mamish. Amen. Bekore. Do you know the name of the little girl in Florida? Yeah, well, uh, I have it here somewhere. <clears throat> yes, Yehudas, Yehudas Golda, Bas Aliza Khan. Should have Rafu Ishlein. Amen. And Rosh Basara. Amen. 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 Okay. Today's turn continues <coughs> the subject of mitzvahs and mitzvahs with Kavana. Okay. Can I ask a question before you start? Yeah, sure. Are you going to have make a seal? I haven't thought about that. Well, that's why so, I brought so... it up now instead of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, I think we show, should. Well, let's talk. Uh, whoever wants to talk offline about what that would look like. Okay. Uh, it's it's interesting. Thank, thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for bringing it up. But yeah, no. If what it would we, look like. In the chat. Wanna... Let's chat back and forth in the chat. Yeah, we'll chat in the chat in the chat. Okay, page two th uh, three three nine in Lessons in Tanya. 
And uh, here, page, uh, near the top, three lines down on page, Kuf Nun Ches. So I, as I mentioned yesterday when we concluded that the uh, discussion uh, yesterday about the uh, the virtue of mitzvahs, I mean, that is our subject, the virtue of mitzvahs versus learning uh, or or even davening. Remember, the virtue of davening was huge, right? The davening changes the state of things. When you pray, when you pray for Rafur Shlema, God willing, you get Rafur Shlema. When you pray for rain, you get rain. Mitzvahs don't change the, the physical state of things. That was a, you know, one of the not downsides of mitzvahs. But what's the upside of mitzvahs is that mitzvahs are direct hamshacha, direct drawing down of God's will. Yesterday, we spoke about that in the context of positive mitzvahs, because you're actually doing something so you can get the feel, that, you know, like when you're shaking that esrig that you're drawing down from God's will. Today, we'll speak about, in addition, and don't think we're excluding, the negative mitzvahs, the things that you don't do. And that's where he starts. Uh, but aren't you, aren't you also elevating the physical? So you're not just drawing down, you're also elevating? You're elevating, yes. It's Amshacha and it's uh, it's uh, Leah and Amshacha. It's a circle, yeah. And how do you do that? That's even the stronger question. How do you do that when you're not touching the thing? <laughs> how do you elevate something by not getting involved with it? So that's that's the question he's pursuing today. And but he's going to focus, however, mostly on the Hamshachas. Ach Oidzois, maybe even all the Hamshachas, we'll see. Ach Oidzois, in addition. This is true. This is what we said uh, yesterday about uh, the mitzvahs drawing down from the deepest parts of Hashem, Hashem's Ratzon, right? And the performance of them elevating up to that state. How does that apply to a negative commandment as well? As he says, but it is. He says, it's, it's equal in all the mitzvahs, whether positive or negative. So he's now going to compare what's achieved by mitzvahs versus what's achieved by the high, high levels of godly expression as expressed by the love and fear, the midos that are invested in the supernal creations called angels. All the Love and fear, um, intellectual love and fear, right? The Nisham and the Malachim are bodies, their bodies are spiritual, so they have a construct also of mind and so called body. And the meters of love and fear that exist in their intellectual state, the Malachim. After all, I'm putting those words in, after all is said and done, however high that is, they are still creatures which are being brought into creation from nothing to something, right? And as he explained, uh, or just touched on, but we explained yesterday, the creation is all with speech, which is a, uh, only an emanation, and an even sort of a uh, couple steps removed, there's an emanation of thought, there's an emanation of speech, and speech is at least twice removed from the internality of Hashem. So they're only creatures, and they're creatures which are brought into being from Ayn Layesh. And they become the categories of the Nefesh, layers, and Ruach uh, of Abriya, Yitzira, and Asiya. That's the spiritual quality of those worlds. Okay, but they're just creations, and they're just spiritual emanations. They're not God himself. Avlapirte ha-halachas, but the specific halachas, ein hamshachas chokma Allah de hamatzil borachu. They are a drawing down of the supernal wisdom of the emanator borachu, and I'll put in the word, it's himself. Not just emanations of godliness, but emanations, and they're not even emanations, they're direct communications of from God himself, as we've spoken about, from his Kesser, and from way, way deep in his Kesser, 
And as we're going to now explain, coming directly down, not through a seder of descent and, and camouflage and concealment, but it was called Derek Mava. This passes right through. It's a pass-through. It's the Hamshacha of the emanator Borahu, the Hachma law of the emanator, may he be blessed. Hamalubeshis Begashmias, and that emanator himself is drawn down into the physical thing of the mitzvah. The Halvosha Zu, and this enclosement, even though we're using the word enclosement, it's not like the enclosement of godliness even in the realm of the intellectual love and fear of the angels. Why? And what's the difference? The Hassan, there, in that intellectual love and fear coming into a spiritual body, a body, although I'll be a spiritual, of the angel, there, Halavush hu mailingu master legamri. There, the purpose of the garment is to completely conceal. This is the metaphor we use about our relationship to God being created by Simpson and concealment. It's a conceal concealment for the sake of a revelation, as we've used the muscle of uh, seeing the sun with sunglasses, a concealment of the sun so that you can benefit from it, look at it, and not get your eyes burned. Right? But, the per but that process, that ability, is because of the emphasis on concealment, concealing the directness of the sun. The Hester Helen in a concealed, covered over way. Oh, Helen the like the concealment that exists down here in the lowest level of this physical earth, this coarse physical earth, right? Which does not reveal godliness. When I hold this cup in my hand, I do not see godliness. I see a cup, right? So not like the that kind of concealment. Lagabi Chacham Hala in relation to the way God's wisdom Hamalubeshes Ba is being clothed in Seder Hahestalshalis. As it says, Kulim Bahakma Asisa, which a simple translation means you've made everything wisely, but the drush uh, on it, that the world of Asiya conceals God's supernal Hachma. And what is it? What is it that's being concealed? The externality of the externality of the vessels of Malchus of Azilus, That's what's coming down and being invested in. The word is malubish and clothed in, but in a way of concealing. And that's what comes down in the most concealed world, which is the world of Asiya, in the Seder Histalshalus. Shehi Mishuteras. Legamri, that godliness, that chokma of the emanator himself is concealed completely. Beruach nefesh de Asiya in the spirit and the soul of the world of Asiya. And likewise, even in Bria, Himesuteras, right? Even Bria is, of course, more exposed. But again, what's being, being exposed is the haora, the re, the chutzonius of godliness. Yeah, in Bria, there's more of that. And in its in Atsilis, there's almost hundred percent of that, of that being, however, the however, what is that? That is just the haora, the ray, the concealment, the under ray, which is just a manifestation of some kind of concealment of Hashem. Completely. Buruach nefesh in the in the ruach in the soul, Shahem Bikinis and Abroim, which the soul, with all of its levels, after all, is only a creation. The Hester Behelem, Haboyra, as a result of the concealment and the covering over of the Creator, Min Hanivra, from the created. The Creator is covered over, hidden from the created. That's Seder Hestalchus. Oh, now we'll contrast. Mitzvahs. Masha'en came, Ahalochas, the laws of what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Hariyahoras, Aham Shocham, Me'ira, Bahem, the Giloi. The ha'ora, the ray of hokma, shines in them in a revealed way. And when it comes down all the way to even to this world, this uh, revelation of godliness in the form of God's hokma 
it isn't just Chachma, because way behind it is God's Ratzon, which is the crown. This is what he really wants. And his Ratzon, and it's not mentioned here, but in other places, ultimately his Taina, his whole delight, is us doing mitzvahs down here below. That's the whole purpose of that whole Seder and Stalchulis. And that flow from that highest, highest level comes down here directly as a pass-through all the way down to the physical level in the physicality of mitzvahs. And maybe Yantam, and we see this on Yantam, for instance. We feel something different on Yantam. Why, why do we feel Yantam thick or Shabbos thick? He's just using this as an example. Because we're feeling something of God's pleasure. L'sanag al Hashem, we say on Shabbos. L'sanag al Hashem. We experience the Tainug, which is al Hashem, which is even higher than God's name. Yud Kevabke, Yud Chachma, Ebina. Higher than that. That's a drush. Well, from Gosidus, L'sanag al Havaya. Shechesed de Atzilus, and when Lubashi Slogamini bechesed de Bria, because when in a mitzvah, the Chesed of Atzilus, which is enclosed completely in the Chesed of Bria, Mechaya Olamazer enlivens this world, Agashmi, Agide Mavar Chesed de Yetzira, by passing through, passing through being not affected by the Tzimtzum, passing through Chesed de Yetzira, the Asiya, Hanikragam came Haslabshus, which is also called Hislabshus. Why he says also? So we're making a distinction here. There's a kind of a word Hislabshus invested in or enclosed in the Levush, right? One way of looking, of not looking at it, one way of understanding that is the hislapshus of Hashem in the Bria, where the hislapshus, the putting on the garment, is a putting on the garment so you can tolerate the heat or the cold. Usually it's the cold, but tolerating by diminishing, by concealing. Then there's another meaning of hislapshus, which we have on this page, which is hislapshus derek mavin, is enclosement, but in a pass through. There's no dilution. Shim lav came, lo hoyo poil begashim is oilam hazeb. Because if not so, then the object of the mitzvah would not be the object of a mitzvah. It would just be a thing containing some godliness, right? But it wouldn't be a direct expression of God's will or tainum. Ve'avshe hagashim is oilam hazeb, vade master legamne. Now, okay, that's nice, but. It's a thing, isn't it? It's a physical thing. And when you look at the Ezra, you don't see that, right? You see the Ezra with your, I mean, with your physical eyes. Even though the uh, the physicality of this world completely conceals, even the most low emanations of godliness in, in Chesed of Asiya, for instance, nevertheless, a halacha atzma, the, the law itself, the law itself, enigashmi is mamish. Right? We're talking about davar mitzvah. The davar, the davar mitzvah, the davar, the thing, the esra, yes, it's a creation and it's subject to all of that. But the esra has something else in it. It has a direct expression of God's tainug and his will invested in it. And that's the halacha. We're applying something to the esrei, to the physical thing, which is the halacha. And the halacha is not gashmias at all. Shehibichin is ratzon. It's God's will, hanimsha mechama chachma Allah, which is drawn down from chachma Allah. The halacha which says lahakel, that here you should be lenient, or lahachmi, or here, here you should be strict. So that will is in, when you're holding it, and you're holding it as an esrit, not as a piece of fruit to eat, but an esrit to do a mitzvah with, you're holding the expression of God's ratzon and tainut in your hand, in that physical thing. Tamayim, and this, this he describes this Derek Maiver, it's like tamayim hayodim amotam gabaya. It's like water which flows from a high place to a low place, just like a waterfall. Nothing in, be nothing in between it. That's not slowing it down. It's just coming straight down. And the physical thing itself, in which is expressed the halacha, the emis who master legamri, as I said, or as he implied, the physical thing itself 
you don't see that. For instance, if you, there's a halacha, that is a business ideal. You, you, do, well, you exchange a, a, a cow with a donkey. You exchange a cow with a donkey. Or other misfizy canes, you became boss of Pigel. We talked about Pigel yesterday. If a cane has a not uh, intentional thought, that, that okay, but you don't see the change in the thing. But the thing is changed internally because the Ratzon of Hashem is changing. Uh, someone's hand is up. Aviva, your hand is up. But it's, it's, there is no intrinsic holiness in the thing until the Jew actualizes it. That's, be, that's beautiful. Nahum. Exactly. Okay. And how can the Jew do that? Because there is invested in that thing, that power, which the Jew, meaning the Jew doing the mitzvah, in the case of positive, or refraining from doing the thing he's refraining from, that's what brings it up. Yes. So in Esrog, let's say in Esrog, that you find on the ground has absolutely no holiness in it, intrinsically, until it is intentionally used in the mitzvah. Well, yeah, yeah. I was better. I, it's easier for me to understand. The piece of wool, let's say, that you're going to make tzitzes with doesn't have that until it's associated with a mitzvah. So, correct. So, the, the asterisk on the tree, the only thing why I'm hesitating here, and maybe someone can help here, is um, the infuse, the revelation. Of, I'm not so sure that you can't say that the holiness isn't there because, I mean, in the first place, it's designed for this. But on the other hand, it can be eaten. So that's why it's simpler for me to say the wool. The wool that's from the sheep doesn't get this capability until it's injected with the mitzvah of Hashem, which is the, the you know use for the tzitzis. And, and to fill in. Yeah, to fill in. And the, the leather, etc. And, I, and I, yeah, that seems to apply, I think, to the esrog as well. Yeah. Only, only by when it's taken for the mitzvah and utilized for the mitzvah that's when it manifests its direct injection of God's will. Yeah, you have to say that. But before that, there's no injection, there's no manifestation, there's and, no there's no will will in it. Yeah. Unless there's the kavana, you're you're planting wheat specifically to to watch it for matzah. They that's, have no, it's, no, that, that's good, but still, it's not. It doesn't. We're talking about here about the the act of the mitzvah. Your kavana. Right? All yeah, right, you're, you're right. designating. I'm, but we have that with Shabbos. If you designate something before Shabbos that you can't use ordinarily, but you designate yeah, you that point. you're going to use it for Shabbos, then it's already has some yeah, you're, it's You're right. It, it's right. But that, that's why I mean, I'm that, I mean, that, that's because, like, when you we use this example of wheat, I mean, are you planting the wheat for the intention of, you know, taking paya of, you know, all of that? Right. No, you're planting it to use for whatever but ultimately whatever we use in this world in this created world i suppose has to be used and for things like that yeah yeah right but that's why i'm hesitating that's why i'm hesitating because the the designation already in you know is on the way so uh Rabbi that's Cam why i'm hesitating yeah, yeah i wouldn't make a Rabbi blanket Cam statement and, I wouldn't make a blanket statement. You want to make a blanket statement? I would not make a blanket statement. Uh, that's why I'm hesitating. That's yeah. what I tell you. That's why Same. I'm hesitating. <laughs> right. Can I add something to this, please? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. The, the, there's a uh, situation specifically with fruit trees is that there are other mitzvahs involving them. So well, I that's think something would, else. Um, yeah. uh, including it, it in this general category which seems to apply to many things but like fruit trees have a special category yeah uh, but that's that's a good example of, and, and why i'm hesitating yeah, so, for, yeah, for so instance it, it up it's not just that you would pick the edrog all fruit trees have other mitzvahs associated with yes them. yeah let's, 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 but again my hesitation shemitah for instance everything no. that you plant you know has that, a halacha so can i finish we're over, we're over talking to each other. Go ahead, finish. Okay. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. If we, do we say, for that's why I'm hesitating, because do we say, since every fruit and everything planted is, is shaykhis to shmita, do we apply what we're saying here? That because of its shaykhis to shmita, it's an example of something which is revealing Hashem's will? Or do we say that Hashem's will is revealed when you actually behave with it the way you're supposed to in the shmita year? That's the question that's really being asked. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that we'll leave that hanging. Unless someone else has a resolution. <laughs> okay. Rak, a halacha, the atzma, the halacha itself, imhatam hanigla, with the reason which revealed, you know, why we do, not the intrinsic reason. Like, for instance, kashris. We don't know the intrinsic reason why this is kosher and this is not. But when the the the, the, the reason for the mitzvah, where we understand, we understand the mitzvah, that's revealed. So that's part of it, understanding the mitzvah. That's what halacha is all about, having the time of the mitzvah, the, uh, the, the understanding of the mitzvah. He mebechines malchus debriya. As we said uh, in earlier places, we learned talmud debriya. The Talmud is in, invested in the world of Bria, uh, Mishnah in the Yitzira, etc., etc. These, so these are the halachas. These halachas uh, in in Bria and Yitzira, which is Mishnah, they are bechinas neshama. They are the soul of the mitzvah, which is elakus. These rulings are elakus, right? Amachaya umahava nefesh ruach nebiyah. And this, this, these rulings, these halachic rulings, of uh, which is God's chokmah, uh, brings these, uh, which is bringing into the level of reality the holiness of the thing, the sacredness, the connection with godliness in the thing. Chehein de chilaberechimo, and that connection is gives rise to a feeling. You know, we take the esrog with. You can't wait to get up in the morning to you know bench lulav and esrog etc. That's invested in it. Which is like the love and fear of the angels. And it's like, and it also invested in them, is God's will and wisdom. In the, again, this, they've become created beings through a say the histalshalist, being created from, from I and Liesh. And therefore, they satisfy the thirst. But because they're davar mitzvahs, davar mitzvahs, when we're used for davar mitzvahs, they, they become, they satisfy our thirst, right? Our yearning for God. Because they have built in them, back to the point, the God's will and tainug before they even came down to olam azeh, like water, which comes straight down, passing through. And even after they came down into the world of Asiya through the Hislabshis of say the Histalshalis, they they're much, much higher. They're higher than even any any neshama of any world. Because the soul of any any world is godliness. But the Misra, the Dabar Misra, contains in it, now here we go, all the time, or it has the potential to reveal, whichever way you want to look at it, not just godliness, but the will and wisdom of God himself. Not the, the, the delight and the, the pleasure and the, uh, and, the, and the will of God himself, which is different from things which are not used for a mitzvah. That's today's Tanya, and I, I love the, the question. And when is that? Is it all the time or only when they're used for the mitzvah? Is it when they're set aside? You've got three levels here. You have the wheat field stam, but it's going to be subject to Shemitah. Does it have this quality? Then, uh, as, as, as Rivka has set up, you put something aside. You haven't done it yet. You haven't put that thing aside that you're going to do something holy with on Shabbos. Is it then? Or is it only when you're actively involved in it. But in any case, in general, 
The Devar Mitzvah, what is that point? The Devar Mitzvah and the Halachas of the Mitzvah have something that no other thing has, even though they're both on the same level of physicality. Right? The peach, which I'm just eating, well, that's not a good example because I have to say a bruffa. Um, but the, the, the object which is here designed to be used for a mitzvah, its design includes in it the ability to release, and certainly when it's done, or when you're not doing it, when you're in the act of the mitzvah, the deepest levels of Hashem, not just the elokus, the godliness that flows from top to bottom through say the but the deeper level of God's himself, which passed through directly into the physical object. And that's what makes the Devar Mitzvah and the act of the Devar Mitzvah so crucial and different from any other act. Okay. Wait, 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 excuse me. Um, is it okay for me to just, I, I, my, my son is stationed near Tzvat and he called me this morning and he asked if there, any, that if I could get the telephone number of a seamstress in Sfat. So, Rivka or Sara, I'm sorry. Okay, you guys, you guys can talk. I'm sorry, I feel like I bombed this, uh, this, uh, this tiny you call. Just, um, send you a private a message. Thing. Private, can you message me on yeah, the private WhatsApp? Message. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. In the group, okay. you can find our WhatsApp in the group. Okay, thank you. And you introduce all he needs? Isn't there something more we could do for him? Come on. Yeah, well, you, um, guys, I'll give guys, you, you know what? I, maybe I'll privately give you his number and you guys, can you can chat about you could chat about Please. this all in a private okay, chat. Sorry. Right? Okay, sorry. Okay, bye bye. But I'm meanwhile, sorry. we'll use your metaphor. We're gonna stitch together God's tainug, his deepest level with the <laughs> physical object. We'll make a stitch. Okay. Uh yeah, so that's what we'll do today. Lots and lots of mitzvahs. And we'll see you tomorrow. Be well. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you.